Hello, good evening. Good evening. Okay, we are in session number three of this week. It's going very, very fast. We are going to end at the first week tomorrow also. I think the time is running very fast. So yesterday we have some exercises in which we are going to see the answers. We are going to um, wait for the others to come because we need to solve the sentences that we have in the document or the exercises that we have about the passive voice. Then we're going to um, change the topic and we are going to talk about pronunciation of some vowels. In this case, we are going to talk about the, the vowel O. Um, and I have, a uh, long table in which you are going to see some uh, specific information, but in this case, I don't know if I can take the, this one because I need to have this um, table in the document that we are seeing because I need to explain something. But in this case, I think it will mark a, that is wrong, that the words are wrong, because in that case, I have uh, some symbols in the document. So let me see if I can, I can have that. Yeah, it, it marks the, the error. Okay, yesterday we were seeing the last part of the passive voice. In this case, we were talking about passive voice uh, without by, we have two sections for that. We have the first one in which we learn about the by phrases that we use to complete the information that we have uh, about a situation uh, in which maybe we don't have the information of who is the person that is doing the action. And we are adding that to make like something very surprising. Um, and then we were talking about uh, the uh, structure of uh, the passive voice in the different senses. And we have some uh, sentence in which we are going to write the words that are missing in uh, those uh, sentences. So I don't know if you have uh, the answer for the sentences, if you can help me to write the answers or I will write the, the answers for you. So in the first one, we have penicillin by Alexander Fromin in 1928. What is the uh, words that we are going to write in the first one? Was discovered. Oh, okay, was discovered. Thank you. Was discovered by Alexander Fleming. Then we have number two, statement. Then we have this face from all the witnesses at this moment, and we have the verb take. How can we write that verb in this sentence? We're taken. Mm, taken is okay. But then we need the verb to be for a statement, plural. We are going to use R. R, and then we are going to add B in that case. R being taken for all the witnesses at this moment. Then we have number three, Wales by an international ban of swelling. Then we have mass protect. How can we write that mass protect? Mm. 
we're just going to add something in the middle of must protect and we are going to change protect a little bit. Must be protected. Good, must be protected. Perfect, thank you. Then we have both weddings by God's pay. And we have a cutter. In that case, we're just going to write something else. Mm -hmm. Happiness. In that case, we're going to use birds to be in past. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, what? For Pluto? Where, where? Very good. Yeah. Where and cutter is the same, or we are going to use something else? Cutter. With E D at the end. Good. Then we have number five. Uh, Picasso, and we have this space from the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and we have a steel. In past, store. We're going to use was stolen. Stolen. Uh huh. Was stolen. Good. Then we have two here. We are going to write two. In this case, has this washing machine in German. We have make. That is the second one, but the first one, what is? If we are talking about past. Was. Ah, was this washing machine? Made. 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 Muy bien, excelente, made. Made in German, good. Then we have here. In China, we're just add something to what, what, what wrong is is ground. Is ground good? Number eight, we are almost done. When we reached the airport, we found that all the flights were canceled. Was canceled. Mm -hmm. We're consolidated, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to use are. have been, are. Case, had, had been, you can see it. Ah, mm -hmm. good. Had been consoled due to the storm. Number nine, the facts until tomorrow morning. Will a negative happen? Huh? Will a negative is one 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 what one ten one be sent be sent that's good and we have the last one we have two. The soundtrack of the movie always after the filming is finished. In this case, we are going to use present of bird to be. Where? Mm -mm, present. Ah. Mm. We're talking about one thing. Is, is, is always, is, always, always, other. Ah. Added. That's good. I mean, add it after the filming is finished. Good, good, very good. So that was the exercise that we have for the passive voice. Now, I have here 
a table. But let me explain first what is um, the topic that we are going to see. Because we have something like, uh, we need to practice, that is the pronunciation. And in this case, we are talking about the pronunciation of a vowel. We are going to know what is the pronunciation of the O sound or the vowel O. So we are going to write here English pronunciation. Sound with O. Maybe we can think that we um, just have one kind of sound when we are uh, using the vowel, but uh, the reality is that we have a different kind of sounds that we uh, make when we are talking depending on the words that we are using and the structure of those words. So in that case, the, we have the sound O that has a different uh, ways in which we pronounce that sound. Um, it's kind of uh, hard to uh, understand all these um, structures, symbols, uh, how to pronounce and all of the things, but when we are practicing um, our English, uh, we are going to use these um, symbols that I will present to you in a moment, because it's easier for us to understand how to pronounce some words. So in this case, they all sound have three different pronunciations, but we are going slowly. Let me give an explanation. Um, about this topic, and it says the American O, but in this case, we are using the American um, pronunciation, we are not using the UK, uh, but if you like the UK pronunciation of the words, you can practice um, using that, um, that way to speak. But in this case, we are using the American one. The American O sounds can be difficult, there are three distinct sounds. The short O, as in hot, the long O, as in boat, and the reduced O, the phonetic name is schwa sound, schwa sound. That is the sound of that symbol, as in above, above. It's like we short the word. The basic rule are this. Use short O for simple spelling in words or word parts. Use long O with complex spelling. A silent vowel near to the O. Use the reduced O, the U, as in up, up. Sometimes when O is not a stress. And most exceptions to the uh, rule, uh, we are going to use a lot of exceptions to the rules. So we are going to write the rules for the O sound in some specification. Then we are going to see the list that we have a long list here of words in which we are going to use the three different sounds of the O. Tenemos tres diferentes sonidos de la O, tres pronunciaciones de la O. Tenemos eh, la O corta. Tenemos una O larga y tenemos una O reducida. Y ya vamos a ver cuáles palabras son ejemplos de esos tres sonidos. Pero primero vamos a escribir las especificaciones, reglas y luego vemos la lista. We have number one here, the short O. We are going to mark the three different 
We have the short O as in this example, hot. We have a the long O as in both. And the reduce O the phonetic. Is the schwa. And we have this example that is above that we can say a uh, boom like this. And we have the rule. We have here number one, use short O for simple spelling. Number two, use long O with complex. Spelling. And we can say a, a silent vowel near the O. And the third one, use the reduced O. Here we have the rules in which we are going to use uh, the different uh, sounds of the O. And it says the best thing to do is realize that O has three sounds. And we are going to see the list in which we are going to find short O, long O, and a reduced O example of words because it's better to understand these kind of topics when we see the examples. So let me take to this. In this case, we are going to see some uh, mistakes. We can call it like that. But there are um, marks like that because um, they have uh, like symbols. Se ven como que estuvieran erróneas o equivocadas porque llevan símbolos. Por eso no los reconoce y muchos están marcados con rojo. But in this case, I'm just going to explain uh, something about this symbol and all of the things. And I will put uh, the, this table in the document, but I will uh, make it better because in this case, it, it looks like kind of hard to understand what is in the uh, spaces. We have here in the first one, we're going to focus on the first one. We have short O, and we have a lot of words in this one. So in that case, we have a, next to the word in English, we have the phonetic translation. Lo que ven ustedes ahí es una transcripción o una traducción o una interpretación fonética 
de el sonido. In that case, when we see this kind of symbol is the pronunciation that we need to follow. We have the first one and that is vision. Vision, black, body, body. Like we are using like an A, body. But, Compliment, compliment, confidence, confident, hot, dog, dollar, holiday, involved, job, lot, lot, modern. So in that case, when we see uh, if you have like a dictionary, a physical dictionary, when you are searching for a word, we are going to find this symbol next to the word. That is the pronunciation. But in some cases, it's kind of hard to follow the pronunciation because uh, in some cases, we don't know about the phonetic uh, transcription. There are like many tables and documents in which we can find the, um, the, the name of these symbols, like we were saying about schwa, that is um, a very, very common uh, sound that we are going to find in English. But that symbols are going to uh, help us to pronounce better the words. So in the first one, we can see that some of the words have like an A in the middle of the word. But in this case, it's not an A, it's a sound. We are doing the sound of the O very, very short. It is not a long O, in this case, it's very short. Like in body, very short, body. But in some cases, it is not like very, very marked. Body. No le estamos marcando tanto. No es como decir body. That it will sound really weird. Body. Es como, es como que lo digamos muy rápido. Body. Y no se marca tanto el sonido de la O. En long O, we have bone. Bone. Que es como si uniéramos O. Bone. Bone. Then we have comb. According, course, poor, don't, don't, the sound, don't, donate, donate, home, home, no, it's not like home, very fast, home, it's home. Then we have innovate, joke, the sound, joke. Alone, load, motivate, motivate. So in that case is a difference in the pronunciation. So I will, um, I have a different document in which I have this same table with the, uh, the symbol. I think it's better to send the other document that I have uh, because in that document it um, I can say that it's better for the reading part. I will send to the group this document in which I have this uh, table for you to practice uh, pronounce this word. And also I will send you, I will search for a table of phonetic sounds um, that is uh, for understanding some of the symbols that we have here. because. They are very, very different, and maybe in some cases, uh, it tends to be kind of confusing. So then, for the reduce O, we have like a V, right? like this. And we have a verb, verb, labor, brother, company, complete, country, cover, Discover, develop, honey, income, measure, 
Major. The, the, the uh, symbol is that sound. Major. Taylor. Love. Man. The sound. Man. All of those symbols have a different pronunciation in a different um, part of the mouth in which we pronounce the sound. There are sounds like um, we are just passing a that kind of sound. And there are others that are very marked that with the, uh, the throat, for example, then with a C. There are different kinds of sounds. In this case, we are seeing there are symbols that are specific for the pronunciation. Then we have, let's see another example because we have a lot of words here. We have job, job. Then we have joke, joke. And then we have major, major. Then we have lot, load, love. There are different sounds. Lot, load, love. Then we have modern, motivate, month. Office, order, effort. Often, all, occur. Online, only, other. Possible, host. Of that. Probably, how, police. Problem, how, procedure. Then we have product, program. Then we have position, position. Profit, pro protein. Protein, protein. In that case, we are not uh, pronouncing all, all the uh, vowels because we can say protein, protein. But in this case, if you can see the, uh, the symbols, protein, mm -hmm. not the E sound, protein. Mm -hmm. Potential, potential. Rock, road, religion. Stuff, count, sum, solid, soul, and then we have solidity. So, social, and society. Then we have stock, soul, solution. Stock, though, throughout. Up, the, throughout, but, post, today, work, work, and work, 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 and work. There are different pronunciation, but this, this topic is very short because it's it, um, like practicing the different a pronunciation, the different sounds. So I will send to you uh, when we are done with this uh, session. Uh, I will send the other document in which I have this. Uh, uh, I mean, in which I have the table because you are going to see better the symbols that we are using here for the pronunciation. And also, I will send to you the uh, table in which you are going to find the uh, phonetic translation or the um, phonetic noun for every symbol and in which part of the mouth and in the throat we can produce the sound and they have a specific um, a noun. For the phonetic part, it's kind of hard to understand the uses of all of these symbols, but there are not something impossible. But it is just like to make, uh, um, like to gain information about phonetics, because it is very, very important for uh, English speakers 
or for you that are uh, learning English to understand that we have this kind of symbols that can help us to um, pronounce better the, uh, the word. Así que voy a tratar de buscar un, eh, una tabla o un cuadro que contenga todos los símbolos fonéticos que tenemos en los ejemplos para que ustedes vayan produciendo esos sonidos, que sepan por dónde van a salir eh, los sonidos, el, el aire y todo lo demás, porque es, eh, la fonética es un tema bastante, bastante importante a la hora de adquirir lo que es un nuevo idioma, porque nos ayuda a pronunciar mejor. It's not like we are just going to practice and practice, and practice, but we are going to use also this kind of help that will um, make our pronunciation better. So when we are done with the session, I will send to you the, uh, the table and the other information that we have for um, these sounds. In this case, it's just like to know uh, how many sounds do we have for one uh, vowel? In this case, we have three for the O sound. That is the short O, the long O, and the reduced O for the O vowel sound. So, now we are going to continue and we have some minutes to explain the new topic. So in this case, we are going to talk about the structures. We are going to talk about simple has. So in this case, we are going to make a review, I guess, about this topic because this is one of the most used structures. Um, when we are talking, we use this kind of structures and sometimes we are not paying enough attention to the structure that we are using. And in some cases we are using it and we feel very comfortable with that, but we are not knowing that we are using that kind of structure. So now we are going to see what is the simple path, how to create sentences, and what kind of um, verbs we are going to use for these structures. So, the simple past, also called past simple, past indefinite, or preterit, is the same. It has a lot of names. It's a verb tense, which is used to show that a completed action took place at a specific time in the past. The simple past is also frequently used to talk about past habits and generalizations. Así que para utilizar el pasado simple, el, el simple past, past simple, ¿no? como lo queramos llamar, es cuando hemos realizado acciones completas en el pasado, no acciones que pueden cerrarse en el futuro. Acciones completas que ya tuvieron su tiempo. Y vamos a hablar de hábitos del pasado y generalidades con el simple past. So in this case, the, it's used to talk about the habits and generalization. And in this case, I need to write here to show the complete that a completed action is displayed at a specific time in the past. Now it is used to talk about pensalis and generalization. That is the specification for the simple path. So we are going to talk about simple path forms. And we have the simple path is formed using first plus ed. 
In addition, there are many verbs with irregular past forms. Questions are made with did and negative forms are made with did not. Vamos a utilizar el pasado de los verbos. En muchos de los casos, cuando tenemos verbos regulares, solo le agregamos ed al final del verbo. Pero también tenemos verbos irregulares que cambian totalmente su estructura o su forma cuando están en pasado. So, in that case, we are going to use the auxiliary D. In this case, is the auxiliary do, but in this case, we are using it in past. So, we are going to use the auxiliary D to create questions. And for negative sentences, we are going to use uh, the auxiliary D plus not. So, we have examples of the statements that we are going to create with these structures. We have the positive, we have question, and we have negative. And we are going to write one example for each of these. For the positive one, we have to call Debbie. Simple and easy. To call Debbie. When? In the past. Then for a question, remember, we are going to use did at the beginning, did you, and in this case, call. We are not going to change, baby. In the case, when we have the auxiliary, we are not going to change the, uh, the verb because we are using an auxiliary that is um, affecting my a tense or my, a, I mean, the time in which I am writing the sentence. Cuando tenemos el auxiliar, ya no vamos a cambiar el verbo, porque el auxiliar está afectando la oración y me está diciendo a mí que mi oración está en negativa. Así que mi verbo ya no necesita cambiar. And then we have the negative one, and we are going to use you did not, and again, my verb is in the form. You did not call Debbie. So again, I'm not going to change my verb. So we have here the structure that we're using for this stem. Did not, did and call. We will have call. And here we have call. In past. In this case, if you are seeing, this is a e as a regular verb because we are just using ed as the end of the verb. So we are going to see the uses for the simple past. We have use number one. And it says completed action in the past.
So in this case, it says that we are going to use the simple past to express the idea that an action is called and finished at a specific time in the past. Sometimes the speaker may not actually mention the specific time, but they do have one specific time in mind. The important thing here is una acción que sí se completó. Hay um, senses in which we are going to use something from the past that can be changed in the present or it can be completed in present. But in this case, it is not like that. We are going to talk about something that happened in the past and end in that time. Tiene que haber comenzado en el pasado y tiene que haber terminado en el pasado. Si no ha terminado esta acción, no vamos a utilizar el simple has. Si no, vamos a utilizar otra estructura, pero en este caso tiene que haber comenzado y terminado en el pasado. Pudo haber durado muchos años, pero ya terminó. So in that case, in some cases, uh, the speaker, the, the person that is uh, talking, um, didn't want to mention the specific time. But it is not necessary to say um, the specific, specific time in which this action uh, took place, because um, we can notice that the person has a, a time in their mind, but it is not necessary to mention in the sentences that we are creating. So we have some examples of these. And we have here, example number one, I saw a movie yesterday. I saw a movie yesterday. So in this case, I have here my bird. So, that in base form is C. I saw a movie yesterday and I finished the movie. Then I didn't see a play yesterday. I didn't, in this case we're using the auxiliary, I didn't see a play yesterday. No vi una obra ayer. I didn't see a play or in this case, Yeah, we can say uh, una obra o un juego, cualquiera de los dos. I didn't see. Then we have another one and it says, last year I traveled to Japan. Last year I traveled to Japan. Then in negative, last year I didn't travel to Korea. Then we have a question, did you have dinner last night? Then we have the auxiliary. 
And then we have the verb. She washed her car. She washed. And the last one, he didn't wash his car. Then what is the use number two for this structure? It says that we are going to use the simple past for a series of completed action. Yeah, we're talking about like a, something that finished in the past, but also we are going to use this structure for a series of completed actions. Let me see. Okay, did uh, is an auxiliary. In this case, it is not just for a negative sentence. We can use it in positive sentence too. But in that case, uh, when we are using uh, the auxiliary in question, um, we can use the verb to be, but in this case, it's better to use uh, the uh, auxiliary. But we can use auxiliary in positive, negative, and in question in the three types of, of questions or sentences that we are creating. So it is not just for negative or question. It's for positive too. You're welcome. Okay. We're saying that we are going to use this structure for a series of events that happens in the past or completed actions. And it says we use the simple past to leave a series of completed action in the past. This action happens first, second, third, fourth, and so on. It's making a list basically. I have a question. Tell me. But it's about the last part, the, the mm -hmm. first one. Uh, okay, in, in, in that use, you said that we need a specific time or a yeah. specific moment in the past. So, for example, uh, he didn't wash his car is a specific action, but not is a, a specific time. So, or I don't understood because uh, you need a, a time inspection or it's not necessary? No, in that case, it is not necessary to use time expression. You can, um, as I'm saying in this part, sometimes the speaker may not actually mention the specific time, but they do have one specific time in mind. In that case, it is not necessary to use the um, that kind of expression. You can use these um, sentences and you can say, I, I didn't eat my food and that's okay. Uh, people will think, when, uh, what is he talking about? But you are thinking, I didn't eat my food yesterday or the last week or you have a specific time. But in this case, it is not necessary that you add that specific time. With the auxiliary, you are saying that um, that action happened in the past and it is completed because you forgot to do that uh, action. 
So in that case, it is not necessary. You can add the time, the specific time. In this case, when I am saying that uh, the action happened in a specific time in the past, is because that action ended in that time. It's not like we are going to specify or tell the time in which we are doing that thing. Así que no es necesario que agreguemos esas, eh, eso de ayer, eh, el año pasado, la semana pasada. Sí lo podemos utilizar para especificar o ser muy específicos de cuándo sucedió, pero no siempre lo vamos a poner. Nosotros ya tenemos en nuestra mente cuándo sucedió, así que podemos utilizarlo de las dos formas. Con un time expression o sin el time expression. Así que no es necesario. Pueden hacerlo de las dos maneras. Ok, I cut it down. Ok. In this case, we are uh, talking about actions. Uh, in, in, it is not like one action in this case, a lot of action that happened in a specific time. So we have here, for example, it's like the things we do in a day, for example. When we're talking with someone and we explain what we did in the day, we can say, I finish, I finish work, then, in this case, we're not going to use then, we're going to talk about the action that we perform. Walk in on the beach and found a nice place to swim. So, in this case, we are telling someone. What we did first, we finished working, then we walked on the beach, and then we found a nice place to swim. Then we have another example, and it says, he arrived from the airport at 8. Check into the hotel at nine and meet the others at ten. It's like in a schedule in this case because. He arrived on the airport at 8 and checked into the hotel at night and then meet the friends at 10. It's like in a schedule that we are uh, following with uh, the hours that we have like uh, the eight or something like that. And the last one is like a recipe or doing something in the kitchen. He you have the floor. Lower, pour in the milk. And then add the egg. So in this case, it's like following something. Then we use, we have the use number three. And it says, duration in the past. And the simple past can be used with a duration which starts and stops in the past. A duration is a longer action, uh, often indicated by expressions such as for two years, for five minutes, all day, all year. In this case, we are talking about how long did action take place.
And we have here the expression that we can use. And we have for two years. Then we have for five minutes. All day. All year. And so on. And we are going to end the session with some examples. I mean, yes, we have the examples here. We have here the first one. I live in Brazil for two years. So I am saying that um, I lived there for two years. In my uh, estate uh, has a duration of two years, but now I am living in another place. Then we have number two, Shona studied Japanese for five years. Number three, they sat at the beach all day. They did not stay at the party the entire time. We talked on the phone for 30 minutes. And then we have a question in the network. How long did you wait for them? And the answer, we waited for one hour. So in this case, we are talking about the time, the duration of the action that we perform in the past. So tomorrow we are going to end this part because we have some uh, details that we need to uh, learn about the simple parts and we are going to end the topic. Um, tomorrow I will have or I will give you uh, some exercises in which you are going to put into uh, practice the information that you have about these tense. So we are going to end the session here. Another thing, remember to work in the platform because we are going to end the first session. So you need to, to work in the platform to be um, doing all the exercises that you have. So we are going to see each other tomorrow because in this uh, week we are going to end the, uh, the sessions on Friday. So. We are going to see each other tomorrow. Have a really good night and see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Thank you. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Thank you. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Have a good night. You too.